Ah, look what we have here. Hello, reformers, and welcome back to a world of ice and fire. We have King Oria Talordis right in front of us, right here. You can see he doesn't look particularly happy. He looks a bit grumpy, actually. Oh, wow, yes. He looks antagonistic. <laughs> uh, yes. Well, we have... Actually... <laughs> should I... Should I... Literally... No, you know what? I'm not going to make peace with him because I'd like to take him prisoner. I don't exactly know whether we're going to be able to send him to the wall. I don't know whether that actually works with kings and, and lieges in general, but we're going to find out. Let's try and take him prisoner. We have 799 against 630. Now, in my off-screen time, I have taken back the other fiefs that the Cahorians... Cahorians? Yeah, well, anyway, the forces of Kohor took from me, and it was easy, very easy, just, you know, force them to surrender. But this guy has been attempting to raid our villages, and I, I'm not a big fan of that, thank you very much. I'd like him to stop that, if at all possible, so we're going to go, and we're going to see what we can do against him. So let's see. Uh, oh, we both have 184. Oh, dear. I think my battle size might be a bit too high. <laughs> Oh dear. Yes, I have, of course, been playing Prophecy of Pendor, and obviously the difference in battle size scaling is there, so obviously there is going to be a bit of a disparity in the battle sizes between the mods, and that means that we might have a couple of performance issues in A World of Ice and Fire, so if you can overlook those, that would be fantastic, and I do apologize if we do have any frame rate drops or anything like that, but I... I can't really help it now. If I change the battle size now, it makes no difference. So we're going to just have to deal with it the best we can, and hopefully we will be able to achieve victory without too many problems. Of course, bear in mind, the enemy is an Essos faction. And Essos in general, with the exception of the Volantines, not exactly amazing. They are far from it, actually. They're not exactly powerful, so we should have a pretty easy time of things here, but let's just uh, let's just hold our breath on that, because you never know. Maybe they are going to be like, oh, we are somehow much more powerful than you imagined. You struck me down, Vader, and I became more powerful. Uh, oh, wait, that's the wrong, wrong franchise. Wrong franchise. My bad. <laughs> but you know what I mean. Yeah, that wasn't even the that wasn't even the correct quote, but you you, you get my you get the the gist of it. Ah, yes, very good. Anyway, let's see what we can do with our infantry. I'm going to try and bait them out a little bit because what I'd like to do, of course, is try and get our cavalry to be devastating enough to the opponent that they will panic almost immediately, and that will just provide us so much more of an advantage. So we're going to try heavy tactics right here, and we'll see whether we can make it work. I'm going to tell all my cavalry just to basically go away, and then we're going to be telling our archers to get up close and personal, or a little bit closer, shall we say, than uh, the opponent would like. And we're going to tell everyone to charge in now. Actually, you know what? The, actually, you know what? We still have that bodyguard tag. Oh, I really need to change that. I'm going to tell him to charge in. I'm going to also tell my horse archers to charge in as well. Oh, yeah, there they are. There they are. They're actually coming in here. These are mercenary heavy cavalry. I'm going to tell my Ansali to stand a little bit closer here. I'm going to tell my ar my archers, my, my cavalry, to come around the side as well. We've got to be a bit careful about those lances because those lances can basically just kill me in one hit. So we've got to be a bit careful of that. But for the most part, I think we're going to be absolutely fine. I'm going to tell my forces to charge in now. My cavalry is going to charge in from the side here, as you can see. That is going to be an absolutely devastating charge. And I am going to try and harass many of the enemies here along the front line. Now, of course, now that I have been playing Pandor again, I am a bit more used to a horse that is much, much better armored than the one I'm, I'm actually using here. So my horse is probably going to die pretty easily here, which is unfortunate. So I'm actually just going to... Uh, I, I don't even know. Maybe I should get off it? Should I get off my horse or, or, or not? Oh, I don't know. Because if I'm running or riding at a pretty fast speed, then theoretically I can take a lot of damage. 
so that might not be very good, but I think we'll be okay. I mean, as you can see right here, we've already eliminated over a hundred of the enemy's units just that fast. I mean, that is kind of amazing in my opinion. All right, so otherwise I do have to be careful because if I do get knocked off my mount, then things are going to be very messy indeed. I'm actually going to take quite a bit of damage, if not succumb to my wounds. But uh, thankfully, most of my units are charging in and... I think we are doing absolutely fine. I mean, my exiled knights are kind of having a bit of a problem here. So what I might want to do is, apart from obviously just murder, 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 yes, there we go, thank you very much. Yeah, that's exactly what I thought. As soon as we get off our mount, they do tend to swarm quite a bit. And uh, they, they try to take advantage of the fact that you are much less mobile. So being able to do a little bit of damage here and there, and especially considering, yes, there we go. We actually stopped him in his tracks. That was really well done. And I think, wow, they actually have 220 on the battlefield right now. 220. Right, so we're going to get all of our cavalry. How many cavalry do I have left? 10. That's not, that's not a lot, is it? No, that's not a lot at all. Okay. We're going to have a bit of a problem on our hands then, I suppose, with our mobility on the battlefield. But thankfully, the opponent doesn't seem to have many cavalry themselves either. Bear in mind, they're just running in with bandits by the looks of things for the most part. Yes. Yes. Okay. Oh, there goes his head. He lost his head. <laughs> oh, yeah. That joke. Yeah, I mean, come on. That, that joke never gets old. Does it get old? Maybe it gets old. Oh, well. I got ahead of myself. You should have seen it. You should have seen the smirk on my face right there because I was like, I got ahead of myself. If you if you didn't if you didn't get it, then now you do. Now you do. Now you know the 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 length and breadth of my absolutely awful uh, pun tastic ways. Yes, pun tastic. I said pun tastic. You can cringe all over the place now. Anyway, <laughs> let's try and take out these mercenary so uh, cell swords going to say swordsman i guess they they are swordsman kind of is that my is that my horse this is my horse my horse is still alive i'm actually really surprised i can't believe it okay well let's have a look yep seems like seems like we are we are pretty good we are pretty good right now there's only 50 units remaining uh i'm a bit worried about going in here on my mount because as i say if my mount dies while it's riding at a decent speed i can take quite a bit of damage from that but it seems like the last remaining amounts of mercenaries that the king of Kohor decided to uh, recruit are now perishing which is pretty good pretty happy with that oh wow look at that that is insane huge amounts of huge amounts of units murdered and my shield only took 40 percent damage pretty crazy isn't it anyway what I am planning on doing in the foreseeable future in A World of Ice and Fire is, obviously, now that Essos is completely unified, we basically don't have to uh, take any other fiefs, and I've given all those fiefs away to my various vassals and things like that. Now that that is all done, basically the only thing that is left is to maneuver over to Westeros and actually do something there. Now, I'm not entirely sure what to do, really, because, I mean, that's the thing. We could, in all likelihood, go and try and, you know, kill some of the Westerlands, try and take some of their, you know, some of their uh, castles and things like that. But for the most part, it does that seem like a good idea because the only Westerlands fiefs that are still available for capture are all the way over on the western side of Westeros. And it's going to take us a long, long time to get there. And by the time we get there, there's probably not going to be that many left because obviously we have Dawn, we have, you know, House Targaryen over there. They're doing their, they're doing their thing to, you know, try and inflict as much damage as possible to the Westerlands in, a, in as quick a time as possible as well. They're actually doing a fantastic job at that. And uh, I'm not entirely sure what to do there. Because if I do try to help out against the Westerlands, it, it doesn't really make much sense. So it's kind of a bit of a weird situation because if we go over there, I'm going to be able to take probably one, maybe two 
fiefs total. And what do I do after that? I don't know. I just have just have two random fiefs over on the west side of, of Westeros, which is spreading ourselves pretty thinly as well, which is obviously a bit of a bit of a problem. And I wow, we're actually having some problems here as well, because we're being overrun by bandits and peasants. That seems to be the only thing that we have to worry about here at the moment, so I, I suppose what I can do is just tell everyone to charge in, and we don't have to worry about them at all, with the exception of a slaver camel rider by the looks of things. I'm going to just tell everyone to charge. They can just all charge. Everyone is going to be absolutely fine, no matter what, anyway. So, yes, as I say, not entirely sure what to do, because... Ah, wait a minute. I think I know what to do, maybe. Uh, I'm not entirely sure, though. Okay, what do you think? I'm going to ask you a question. What do you think about this? We could... Try to declare war against random factions and just try to... Well, not, not against random factions, obviously. Not, not you know, we don't want to attack Dornish or, or anything like that because we are technically allied with them, kind of, you know, against the, against the Westerlands and everything. But I'm thinking maybe something like attacking the Vale or something like that. I don't really want to attack the Vale, though, because it doesn't really make sense thematically because even though we are a wildling, technically... We are the ruler of our own faction, and then... I, I suppose... You know what? I know what we should do next. I got it. I got the idea in my head right now. Okay, what we're going to do next is we're going to go all the way up to Free Folk territory. Now that Wanda is our wife, you know, because obviously we got married in a previous episode. Now that she is our wife, we don't have to worry too much about annoying the Free Folk at all and all that stuff. So generally what we can do is we can go to the Free Folk lands and we can try and take it over, basically. So, Mance Raider, your time has come and we will try and overthrow him and, you know, instill or, shall we say, install the, uh, the rightful Free Folk in the lands of the North. But the main problem with that is that we're probably going to get murdered by the White Walkers first, which is a bit of an issue. Anyway, let's take this guy prisoner. Not entirely sure what we're going to do about the White Walkers, but I suppose we'll find out in due time. Oh, I can't capture any more of these guys? Oh, that's a shame. Oh well, whatever the case, we have the King, and we're going to speak to him in a second. Alright, so let's have a look and see what actually happens here. Wow, we can actually send him to the Wall. Alright, so I've actually arrived down in Volantis territory, and there is a couple, I think, of Kohor vassals still around, but I don't know where they are. So they could very well be in Westeros, or for all I know, and, uh, well, we're just going to have to leave them wherever they are. And I'm going to be selling all of my prisoners. Now, here's the thing. Technically, what I could do is I could speak to the Unsullied, and I could actually ask them if they want to join me. Oh, you know what? <laughs> let me actually let me actually try that. Ah, it actually seems to have worked slightly, as you can see. You offer your prisoners freedom if they agree to join your ranks as soldiers. Four veteran Unsullied accept the offer. So I suppose with that, we're actually going to be selling the rest. Actually, wait, wait, wait a minute. Where, where did the guy go? There he is. Okay, so we're going to be selling the rest because I kind of need the cash. I don't... I, do I have a lot of money, actually? I think I have quite a bit in the treasury, but I did take a lot out to actually get this cohort campaign finished. So I'm going to sell 89,000. Fantastic. Look at that. That basically gets me another 70... Uh, wait, wait a minute. Another 50, I think, unsullied for 75k, which is... Well, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Alright, so thankfully, the battle size does seem to be reacting pretty well for us at the moment. And I actually thought that we were going to have some problems like performance issues, but it seems like it's actually working pretty nicely. I mean, it, it might dip a little bit below 30 FPS sometimes, but uh, I think that might be might be kind of worth it for the increased epicness, you know, e increased epicness of the battle itself. I think that's kind of cool. Anyway, you may be wondering, why are we doing this field battle? Well, this is actually a vassal from Kohor, because they decided to besiege one of the nearby castles to where I was. So we're actually going to be murdering them. <laughs> yes, we're going to be murdering them. 
there's no no way to, no way other ways to put it so we're gonna just just gonna go for it and uh, we're gonna see how it goes because obviously these guys are gonna have some mercenary units and everything and uh, it's not gonna be very nice because those mercenary units do tend to have quite a lot of lances and everything but what I'm gonna do is I'm actually not gonna show you the entirety of the battle because we've seen that we are fully capable of eliminating a force much much larger than this one and so it doesn't really make much sense for me to show another one which is on a smaller scale so I'm gonna show maybe the first round because that's usually the hardest and then we will be uh, seeing what happens after that hopefully we'll be able to achieve victory and move on to Westeros as I say I do want to go and actually say hi to the free folk and see what we can do about taking over their territory because amusingly enough they're actually making things more difficult for us in the long run because what they're doing is they are taking a lot of our Night's Watch, Night's Watch vassals prisoner and you wouldn't think that would you you wouldn't think that because you'd think oh yeah surely they're not going to be powerful enough to do that but they are actually capable of doing it mainly because the Night's Watch vassals that we are sending to the wall, and I'm talking about the converted ones here, they are, uh, in, all, in all purposes, not very powerful because they don't have any land, as far as I'm aware. They don't have any villages or castles or anything like that, so they might not be able to field as many units as they would have otherwise been able to if they had stayed a vassal of their previous faction. So that, of course, is a pretty big deal. So that's obviously a thing that we have to be a bit careful of. And what's also a thing that we need to be careful of is getting absolutely murdered by everyone here. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try and move backwards like so. And I'm going to try and take out their horse if they will allow me to do so. Yes. Okay. Ah, thank you. Phew. Okay, I was a bit worried there for a second. I actually thought that we might get murdered there. I, I, I was really trying in this episode, you know? Could you tell? Could you tell? I was really, actually really trying to stay alive. But... <laughs> Alright. Alright. Okay. Sure. Okay, game. I understand that you have voice recognition. I understand that you, you, you heard me, you know? You heard me. It's all, you know, it's Alexa. It's Alexa all over again, isn't it? Ah, it's like, ugh. Oh. Alexa, play death. There we go. Yeah, we did it. We did it, yes. That is... Uh, play Elias' death. That's that's exactly what, what has happened right here. Ah, uh, can you believe it? That has happened multiple times now. And I believe, actually, it happened in Pendor recently, where I was perfectly fine. I was like maximum HP. And then all of a sudden I'm talking about being eliminated and I'm like oh yeah it's really amazing that we haven't gotten eliminated so far with all these Lancer units you know fighting us and then all of a sudden a Lancer comes out of nowhere and it's just like howdy how's it going here's my Lance ah <laughs> oh, yeah that happens to me does that happen to you I don't know maybe it does maybe it doesn't but if it does, you know my pain. You know my pain right now. Oh well, never mind. We have achieved victory, as was going to be the case, because, well, we have so much better units than they do. But, uh, yeah, I managed to get myself eliminated after saving myself from being absolutely swarmed. Great. Ooh, what do we have here? All right, so as you can see, I've actually set up my archers and infantry. Well, not my infantry. Unfortunately, it took a little bit long to get here, so now our archers are being absolutely murdered. But the point is, is that my cavalry, as you can see, is all the way over here. And there's a very good reason for that, because I wanted to actually have a pretty cinematic experience when it comes to actually charging in our cavalry here. So you can see here that our cavalry is actually... Whoa, yeah, just coming in like no one's business. Unfortunately, it seems like a small contingent of infantry decided to spoil the fun and has protected the enemy's archers pretty well. And uh, that's kind of unfortunate, but it's okay. It's okay, because we do have our infantry protecting our archers over there, so that's great. So we're having all kinds of different skirmishes going on on the battlefield right now. This is actually a different vassal, by the way. 
Yes, so the, the previous vassal that we were doing battle with, I actually was able to take him prisoner. So we will be able to send him to the wall when, uh, when we have a spare moment, I suppose. But at the moment, we're just having to deal. We're just having to deal with what we have right here. And I'm going to try and save that guy from being murdered, that exiled knight. Not entirely sure why he's being murdered by some random, but okay. It's absolutely fine. Okay, C could you could you actually... Come on, veteran freerider, you can't be killed by a mercenary billman. But apparently he was. He wasn't killed, but he was knocked unconscious, really. Can't believe it. Oh well, never mind. As you can see, 180, 190 or so units have been eliminated so far. And it is just going to continue in that vein. Wow, I gotta say that being covered in the enemy's blood, Elias is rev reveling? Yes, reveling, that's the word. Anyway, yes, he is absolutely reveling in this, and uh, he has driven the opponent away from... Uh, well, they were attempting to actually besiege something, obviously. And uh, yeah, he's actually gotten a good amount of kills this time as well, so pretty nice. Otherwise, uh, as you can see, all of them have been eliminated except 12... 12? No, except 10... Ugh, my eyesight, really. Come on now. Anyway, point is, victory is assured, and we will hope, let's cross our fingers, that we will be able to take this guy prisoner, because then we, I think we would have sent quite a few of the cohort vassals to the wall, if not all of them. I'm actually unsure how many they have in total, but... We can always check the notes. We can always check the notes. And uh, yeah, those guys over there are going to prove to be kind of annoying to pin down. Because that's what the Dothraki are, aren't they? They're a little bit annoying when it comes to their horse archers. They're very, very good at evading attacks. Alright, so there it is. We were able to eliminate them. And let's have a look and see how many Elias was able to kill here. Ah, uh, Wow. Yeah, nice. We were able to kill 25 and 11 wounded, obviously. So, yeah, Wound Wound got 6. Sirio actually got 5. He's actually getting a pretty decent amount of kills in every single one. Let's see if he's... Yes, we actually do get to take him prisoner. That's fantastic. Alright, so I'm just going to take these guys prisoner and then we'll speak to the vassals. Alright, so let's speak to him, say that he's committed high treason and he's going to go to the wall. There we go. Now we're gaining huge amounts of renown by doing this every single time, which I am really, really pleased about. Because that means that we'll have even greater amounts of army capacity, even though I am probably going to need to upgrade my ships to be able to take across as many units that I'd want to take across to be able to defend against the inevitable White Walker invasion, as well as, of course try to eliminate the free folk and that's the thing eliminating the free folk I don't think is going to be that difficult because well we know how effective their units are they're not very effective at all so we are going to have a pretty easy time there I think I probably won't even I might not even need to use spies against them but if I do I'm going to need to well get some more as you can see I only have nine I'm going to need at least 20, in my opinion, to actually have an effective chance at uh, being able to take a couple of their towns. Anyway, I thank you very much for joining me and for watching, and I will see you next time.